Good Saturday morning, everybody. I'm not an animation historian, and in this episode, I wanted to provide commentary on Siberian Sam, one of the new Looney Tunes cartoons that was released earlier this summer. So the reason why I chose this film, Siberian Sam, was out of all the Bugs Bunny films that were released earlier this year, um, it was my favorite one. Um, so far there's been about 23 actual films of, you know, five, six, seven minutes released, and fully nine of those are Bugs Bunnies. And unfortunately, I, I'm not too big of a fan of most of them except for this one and uh, Vincent Van uh, Fur and Hair Restoration. Uh, the other ones I didn't really care for, and I'll get into the reasons why in just a little bit, but uh, this one, like I said, was my favorite of the ones that was released. Um, so, even though I'm going to be praising this film, I'm going to open with a critique right here uh, that I've noticed in some of the shorts. Most men freeze to death in these parts, but not Siberian Sam. What's my secret? Why, it's this big furry hat. Out here, if you ain't wearing one heck of a noggin warmer, you're as good as dead. So one thing I've seen a lot of in many of these shorts is there's a lot of talking to the audience, more than was done traditionally. And a lot of the times it's used to just shoehorn the exposition into the beginning or a key part of the short and it just feels really unnatural in, in many of the instances where it's done um, when there's so many different ways that exposition can be um, demonstrated. Um, so here in Pest Coaster, another Bugs Bunny, you can see in the beginning how Sam does it. Now wait just a doggone minute! Rule number one! No filthy animals on my ride! No place for any filthy, furry, flea-ridden creatures on my coaster! Now that's more like it! So, you can see in, in both instances, it, it sets out very clearly what is going to motivate Sam and affect his decisions. He needs a new hat, he has an irrational dislike of animals, even stuffed animals. So aside from making uh, characters' motivations obvious, the motivations are still weird. Like, why does Sam have this irrational hatred of animals to the point that he even hates stuffed animals? Um, you know, when watching the classic films, the motivations were more simpler and more apparent, but they made sense. Like, Wiley Coyote didn't have to talk to the audience, but his motivation for getting the Roadrunner made sense. You know, Elmer was a hunter. You know, his motivations at that point made sense. Um, Sam had like a Napoleon complex, so his motivations, his aggression made sense. Like, this just doesn't make sense. Oh, am I sure relieved I didn't hurt that baby. I despise me some animals, but I would never hurt an innocent little baby. I'll even prove it to you. So again, there was another piece of uh, just straight out talking about character motivation. And it's like, okay, so you don't want to hurt babies. So who said you did? Like, why, why take the time to make that clear? You could have just skipped that part and, you know, made a different segue to this ending gag here. Um, so that's just kind of one of the critiques I had of this particular episode, but I've seen in, in many of the other films. But that aside, getting back to the um, episode itself, what I liked about this, and more importantly what I liked about bugs in this, is that they adhere to the factors that makes Bugs Bunny a likable protagonist that we root for. So um, here's a clip of Chuck Jones in an interview making explicit kind of what made Bugs Bunny um, the likable character that he's been for decades. Uh, man, Bugs Bunny uh, uh, is a much more human character. Uh, and looking back on him, I, not that I thought about it at the time, but if I had to 
to devise a mixture of, of well-known personalities to describe Bugs Bunny, I'd say he would start out with uh, Professor Higgins, uh, a quiet living rabbit who is living down in a hole, minding his own business, perhaps pursuing the history of rabbits in Sanskrit or something. And someone comes along and tries to disturb his equanimity. And so doing, then he, uh, he is not a person like Woody Woodpecker would go out and, bo and bother anybody. He has to be provoked. And we learned that. It was very important that he be provoked because otherwise he'd be a bully. And, and we didn't want that. We wanted a nice person like, like myself. Somebody does something too, but he, then he comes forward and acts like a hero. At that point, he then becomes something very much like, uh, like Errol Flynn, perhaps, or Douglas Fairbanks Sr. And so now we have two strong personality traits there. Now we need one more because Bugs would rather solve his problems orally than he would any other way. So we take a, a dollop of Dorothy Parker and put it in this mixture and stuff that into a rabbit skin, you got Bugs Bunny. And we didn't know at the time, but that's a way of kind of analyzing to find what is in there. Because it's very important for Bugs. And, and, and Bugs very seldom, they're always talking about Bugs hitting people. Look, and my knowledge on all, any picture I ever made or any other picture that Frizz ever made, I never heard of, of him hitting anybody over the head with anything. And that wasn't the way it worked. He, in order to establish the character, he had to take pleasure in, 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 in defending himself. And if he had the choice between running or, or even conquering somebody, he would prefer the track of obscuring them, getting them off balance. And that's much better, much stronger. Better, better comedy, too. So while Chuck Jones was talking, I had showed two clips, one from Big League Beast and the other from Pool Bunny, um, both of which shows the beginnings of the film, and it was a, a good juxtaposition for what, uh, or contrast in terms of how, what Chuck was describing. In Big League Beast, Bugs Bunny is watching TV, his TV goes out, so he invites himself over to the, you know, mad scientist's castle, takes his food, and, you know, takes over his, his monitor. Um, that's not really a, what a likable character would do. And then in Pool Bunny, you know, they, they put him in a situation where it's hot, he's thirsty, he sees the pool, and then he just dives in and starts using it, as opposed to a setup where he asks Elmer, knocks on the door, disturbs Elmer while he's trying to get in the pool, asks to use the pool, then Elmer does something mean, and then Bugs retaliates this way. Um, so what you can see here from the 1953 film Upswept Hair, Elmer inadvertently, but you know, Bugs' home was obviously there, um, moved Bugs' environment. So here, when he goes into Elmer's pool, first unwittingly, and then just kind of, you know, goes with it, you know, it's a situation that he didn't create. He's not being uh, a bully. He's not um, trespassing deliberately on anybody's property, using other people's um, pools, bathrooms, uh, TVs, whatever. It was a situation that he didn't put himself into, and he just found himself in, so he's just running with it, which is very different from those other films. But with Siberian Sam, uh, the plot of this takes very much a similar structure to what's shown here in Upswept Hair, where um, Siberian Sam loses his hat, and then he's out to find uh, a replacement for his hat, and that's what introduces him to Bugs Bunny. And also what kind of establishes the dynamic between Sam here being unlikable versus Bugs being likable is that Sam is an opportunist. He's just right there about to use his dog to make a hat before his dog said, you know, that's a boundary I'm not going to let you cross. And then here we see Bugs is minding his own business. He's wound up in and the Siberian tundra, um, you know, based on uh, bad recommendations, but he, he, he's there minding his own business, and then Sam sees him and then tries to start making a hat out of him. And then from there, the gags just kind of flow naturally. So I'll just fast forward a bit to uh, 
Probably my favorite gag of the film. All right, calm down, Doc. I know the poison cat for you. <laughs> Are you ready? Here you go, you big dummy. This hat ain't gonna keep me warm. How about now? Anyway, what what is the point I'm trying to make? Um, I'm not trying to sound like that, you know, things have to be done the way they were in order for it to work. I, I'm all open to uh, being creative and trying to do things differently, but when your basic premises are you have character A that is likable and that you're rooting for, and you have character B who you want to see bad things happen to because they're unlikable. There are just certain universals that uh, kind of need to be there. Um, and those shorts that I referenced just bugs kind of violates those and you're just kind of like, well, why am I supposed to be rooting for him? He's just being mean. Um, and I know, you know, earlier on in, in the development of the Bugs Bunny character, um, you know, Bugs did deviate from some of those norms. Um, but, you know, that was kind of early on and it was an exception that didn't become the norm. Um, and I think it was just generally recognized that the, uh, you know, character is more likable and will be more enduring if, um, you know, things are done a certain way. Um, this really sums up my feeling about nesting dolls. You go nice ladies. What the? Well, that was the most fun 10 seconds I've had in a long time. Oh, you stupid rabbit, you gotta open them all like this. Huh? Where'd it go? Oh, you mean this? Give me that! Okay, so I'm I'm new to this YouTube video thing, so I guess this is the uh, obligatory part where I say um, if you liked it, subscribe. Um, you know, I'm uploading, I'm digitizing my entire animation collection and putting up what I can. And here and there, I'm going to be making uh, commentary videos and other videos, uh, you know, animation related here and there. So again, thank you. And until next time.